we greet you this morning on this beautiful Palm Sunday. And we pray God's blessings upon you and your family. Bow your heads with me, God. We thank you for this moment in time that you've allowed us to be in this place once again. We pray that your word might go forth as we reflect on the sacrifice you made for all of us over 2,000 years ago. Now, God, comfort all the families that need comfort on today. For you are our healer and our deliverer. And all praise and glory go unto you. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. From the gospel according to Mark, I want to lift up a verse from chapter 8 for your hearing today. Chapter 8, verse 31 declares, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. And when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. And take up the cross, take up his cross, and follow me. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto our God. I want to talk with this thought in mind that for the few moments that we have to share, he was thinking of us. Look at somebody in your house and tell them he was thinking of us. When I reflect back on the dreadful time that Jesus decided to take on this pain for us all, the most difficult part for me to grasp is that he knew beforehand what was about to happen. He knew how he would be dying by crucifixion, which I'm told was the cruelest and most torturous way for a person to die. Death by crucifixion was designed to produce the greatest degree of shame and it was designed to inflict the maximum amount of pain for the longest period of time. And Jesus knew this beforehand. But not only did he know what was about to happen, he understood what was at stake. He understood that this was more than just a physical struggle. It was a spiritual struggle. In his death, he would be taken on the guilt and sin of all humanity. He knew the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah that said he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Nevertheless, when he looked toward Jerusalem, he sees what the disciples cannot see. He now realizes that his earthly ministry will be concluded in the fulfillment of prophecy. He realizes that before he would be able to achieve any victory for us, he must first face and feel the agony of defeat. He knew that before the throne would come, that the cup would come. and His hour has now come. And it is in this hour that there seems to be, as one historian put it, a strange agreement between heaven and hell. It's strange because it appears that now light and darkness are going together in the same direction. Righteousness and sin appear both to be going together to face a horrible death. And the Bible says that as the disciples stand nearby watching and when they realize what is about to take pl place, that, G that Peter dares to pull Jesus away from his destiny. And I need to park right here because there is a lesson here for us 
that sometimes the greatest difficulty to reaching your destiny does not come from your enemies, but they often come from folk around you who say that they mean you well. I wish I had a witness. That they will say that they mean you well, but they don't want to watch you go through what it takes for you to become what you need to become. And what those folk will do is they'll, they will sugarcoat things for you. And they'll tell you that I'll fix it for you. And that there's a real problem there, especially for our young folk, because sometimes you will have folk around you who will love you out of your future. And sometimes you've got to get away from soft arms in order to get to where God wants you to go. Look at somebody and say, don't pacify me. Because if the truth be told, it is in your greatest place of agony that you will gain your greatest strength. But you've got to go through in order to get it. Sometimes you've just got to feel and experience the pain. Let me see if I can help you. Everybody has their own cross to bear. Sometimes you marry your cross. Sometimes you work for your cross. Sometimes the friends you choose are your cross. And God says, pick up your cross, God help me, and follow me. Even if you have to pick up that friend with that bad attitude, God says, pick it up. Uh, you may have had babies before you were married. God says, pick it up and come on. And the agony is coming when I know what I have to do from my character, but I don't want to do it from my emotions. Character fighting against emotions is agony. God says, no matter what the cross is, just strap it on and let's go because the pain of this cross is only temporary and this pain will not last always. And I come to encourage somebody this morning because Jesus uh, was thinking of us and he has a way of showing us that no matter how powerful you think you may be spiritually, there is agony on your way to your destiny. That will cause you to back up and ask yourself, do I really want this blessing? Because the greater the blessing, the, the greater the pain. This might just be a good place to shout because somebody this morning has had to endure some personal pains and agony. God just gave you confirmation that because you are enduring this pain, your deliverance is just around the corner. I wish I had some praises here. Look at somebody that said he was thinking of us. The, the, the pain of knowing that, that you've got to do what you don't want to do will cause a psychological trauma to mess with your mind and your body. The, the pain will mess with your sleep and the pain will mess with your peace. But in order to get where God wants you to be, sometimes you've got to feel like God has forsaken you. I wish I had a witness here. And the Bible says that this is what Jesus felt there in the Garden of Gethsemane as he prayed that the hour might pass from him. And I need for us to understand that this is not the death. It is not the death that he dreaded, but rather it was the hour of the cross. That that moment when sin was to be put upon him. For Paul declared, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Somebody say for us. Who knew no sin that he might be made the righteousness of God in him. And he sent me here this morning to tell somebody that he did it because he was thinking of you. Tell somebody. You ought to encourage somebody in your house because you ought to be happy right about now thinking about the fact that he did it because he was thinking of you. He, he was thinking of you when he began to submit to the agony in order to get to his destiny. He, he was thinking of you when he decided that this is a cup that I've just got to bear. This is a cup that I've got to take, yet realizing that the flesh does not die easy. And I don't know how you feel about it, but there are times in our lives when we think God is going to make a thing easy for us. And he decides that he's not going to make it easy, but nevertheless, he cried out, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. And with those words, heaven dispatched angels to comfort him and encourage him and to renew his strength. And he allowed them to carry him away because he was thinking of us. God help me. And the Bible says that Jesus is carried before a trumped up court. 
stands before Pilate and the people shouted, crucify him. And they threatened to take his life, but I heard him when he says, no man, God help me, takes my life, but I will lay it down freely because I got power to lay it down. And I also got power to raise it back up. And if you don't believe me, watch me. Because in three days, God help me, I will rise again. So, so, so they stripped him of his clothes, tied his hands to a post over his head. And they began to whip him with cat of nine tails, which is a short whip, whip with a heavy leather thong with two small balls of lead attached to the end of the straps. They, they whipped him until flesh fell from his bones. But it, the Bible says that he uttered not a word because he was thinking of us. They, they, they took a small bundle of branches, planted them together in the shape of a crown and pressed it down into his scalp. Until the Bible says red, red, blood ran down his face like water. And the Bible says, but he uttered, God help me, not a word because he was thinking of us. The Bible says that they made him pick up his own cross. God help me. Carry it 650 yards down the Via Della Rosa to a place called Golgotha. He stumbled and his blood is splattered along the stony cobblestone streets. Once he arrived at the top of the hill, they laid him on that cross. Drove nails in his hands. God help me and nails in his feet. He hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour until finally he declared, it is finished. And he dropped his head in the lock of his shoulders and he died. When he died, I'm told that the veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. The earth quaked and the sun refused to shine. That they buried him in a borrowed tomb, but right early, God help me, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And I want you to understand that you don't just get blessings without pain. You don't just get to the next level without pain. And folk that doesn't want to endure pain become manipulators. And they will try to take what you have paid the price for. The devil is a liar. They, they, they want to take what you have suffered to get. And you have to tell them that I cried too hard while you were laughing at me. I prayed too hard while you were out partying in the street. And the devil is a liar. If you think you can walk up and manipulate this destiny out of my life because the testing of your faith will cause you to sweep the house. I wish you'd look at somebody in your own house and tell them that it's time for us to sweep the house because you understand that you are hurting but you are hurting for a reason and the pain that you feel is just growing pains. I wish you look at your neighbor and say neighbor you can handle it because it ain't nothing but growing pains. Tell somebody else sweep the house. I've been thrown down but I'm about to bounce back up. Three days is all that it took. One day for the key to death. One day for the key to the grave. And one day for the key to hell. So I come to tell you today that if you don't want anything, don't call Jesus by his name. Because when you call his name, demons tremble. For right now, the name of the Lord has been exalted above every name that at the name of Jesus, yeah, the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous can run into it and be saved. 
So if your problem has a name, the name of Jesus has been exalted above that name. And he says his name is so powerful that I don't want you to use my name if you don't want nothing. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Shout a yes. And so the next time you get a blessing that you do not deserve, just tell the folk that it was an inside fix. Shout a yes. Because he was thinking of me when he died on the cross. He was thinking of me when they spit in his face. He was thinking of me when they called him out of his name. But I thank God that he held his peace and he stayed on the cross. Because early, I said early, Sunday morning when he got up, I heard him declare that all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Shout yes. So your problem can King Hallow his name. Just put his name above your problem. Put his name above your situation. Put his name above your disappointment. For his name is great and is greatly to be praised. Shout a yes. Shout a yes. Shout a yes. Hey. Oh, glory. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm so glad that he was thinking of us. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm so glad that he bore that cross and he took on my sin and took on your sin. So the day you can declare that whom the son has made free is free indeed. Shout a yes, shout a yes, shout a yes.